does your UR65 do this sometimes? It was just like a little random twitch and I could never get to the bottom of it. Uh, but I did actually manage to make it go away. And the way I did that was I installed uh, Betaflight 3.4. Uh, since then, I've probably had at least a couple dozen flights inside and outside. And it, it hasn't had that little twitch or a jerk once. So I think something changed in there that has, for whatever reason, at least on mine, has, has gotten rid of that. So if you're having that problem too and you haven't upgraded to 3.4, um, it might help you out as well. So I'm not going to go through all the steps of Betaflight from scratch if you've never uh, flashed new firmware because the... Uh, Joshua Bardwell just put out a great video on it, but I will show you the steps on doing the uh, UR65 specifically, just like um, making sure all your settings are copied over and everything. So let's plug it in and get started. First thing I'm going to do is connect and then go down to the CLI and uh, we're going to type in uh, diff all and this is going to create a list of all the uh, parameters that are unique to your quadcopter, including the PIDs, the modes, the name, all that sort of stuff because we want to back that up. So, because when we flash the new firmware, all that stuff's going to get set back to default. So, save that in as a text file, plain text file, and you're going to access it soon. So, save it somewhere you can get to it easily. And now, let's just disconnect, and we're going to go now down to the firmware flasher. And I'm on Mac OS, and on Mac OS, this is really easy. You don't really have to do anything except have your quadcopter connected and then choose the correct firmware. And in this case, we're going to choose the Crazy B F3 FR. That's for FR Sky. If you're using the Fly Sky, you would choose the Crazy B F3 FS. And then down below that, we'll choose the Betaflight 3.4. And then we will load that online. Uh, but since I've already done that, I can't load it again, So, but I already have it. Once you load it, you will then click Flash Firmware, at least on Mac OS. I think on Windows, there's an extra step. But on Mac OS, just click Flash Firmware. It's all finished, and now let's connect to it and go back to the CLI and this is where we're going to uh, paste in our settings that we initially saved in the backup. So let's open that text file and I like to save everything or I like to select everything from starting with the name your 65 and then select everything down below that all the way down to the little hash. Copy that and then we'll yeah and then we'll take that and paste the entire thing into the command line down there and then hit enter and that should apply it and then it will save and then reboot the flight controller. So now it should have the latest version of Betaflight on it. Let's go ahead and first of all let's connect and let's see if our settings were indeed copied over. So let's check uh, you can check the PID tuning, see if those numbers are the same or the easiest is just check configuration, see if the craft name is what it used to be and then if it is then the settings were applied. And now let's go to version and just double check it is indeed on 3.4. So that's the upgrade process for, you know, on a Mac OS, pretty limited use case. Most people are probably on Windows, but that's what I had to do. And then, so here I will cut to some flight footage of me flying around with Betaflight 3.4, and none of those twitches happen in the video or in any of the flights I've had since. So anyway, hope this helps. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.